Hey guys, something I've been wanting to do a long time is a podcast. And I kind of lack the equipment, the ability maybe, but mostly the equipment to do it. And I was doing an interview with my good friend Wright Thompson the other day for our web show, The Weekly Staff. Just so happened a lot of the video part of that did not come out, but the audio did. Now it's not the best quality, but after listening to it and realizing that there's a lot of good stuff there that I want you guys to hear, we decided to make this the very first episode of the Stafford Shirton podcast. So I'm really excited about that. And what you're about to hear is my good friend, Wright Thompson. Wright Thompson grew up in Clarksdale and ended up attending, I believe it was uh, University of Missouri, Missouri State. He's going to straighten me out on that. But in journalism, after reading a book, that made him understand that he could actually get paid to travel and write about things. And that's what he's been doing all his life. And he's been down in New Orleans and a little bit of everywhere else. Ended up working for ESPN as the senior writer. Got some incredible things under his belt. There's a 30 for 30 that's just incredible on ESPN about the ghost of Ole Miss. There is, uh, among other things, two books that he's written. The latest book is Pappy Land. We're going to talk about that today, and it's about Pappy Van Winkle bourbon. And he met Julian Van Winkle, who's the grandson of Pappy Van Winkle, and Julian was on a quest to bring back the original Pappy Van Winkle. And he said, you know, this would make a great book. Could I write a book about this? It turned into completely something different. It turned into a buddy story. It's like this incredible bending of uh, genres where... You could totally see this thing being a movie. And if you're from Mississippi like I am, you can also read so much into it because there's so much of Wright's life here in the Mississippi Delta in this book. If you're from Mississippi, you're going to enjoy the book. Go buy it today at bookstores everywhere, but you're even going to enjoy the interview, I think, just as much. Without further ado, here's my good friend, Wright Thompson. <laughs> We're very low tech. We, I, I, I think we're know, I think we're high tech. Well, I'm a high tech redneck. Oh my God, Hillbilly meets Star <laughs> Trek. I hadn't heard that. Oh, that's great. Remember I that song about that? Yeah. So you know, it's funny because when uh, and when iPads first came out, yeah. we immediately got an iPad register at the restaurant, and people came in. They're like, "Oh my God, what is happening?" It's like the, <laughs> the, fl- the flying airplanes are here. Yeah, got. It's like we got internet and iPads the same well, way. That's it. Yeah. I mean, I remember when they came to hook up the cable boxes in Clarksdale in like '81, and all of a sudden I had MTV. I was like, "We're living in the future." So we had a we had a, one of those huge satellite dishes. Oh, yeah, of course. Because we did. lived in the country, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And so we had MTV before people knew what MTV was. And my friend or my cousin drove from Columbus because he wanted to see MTV. <laughs> Oh my God! Is that's, that not crazy? That's the most Mississippi shit I've ever heard of in my life. Got it. You know, you had the little thing. You had to change it from satellite to satellite. You know, yeah. so you, that big dish moved. Did you had to aim it? Yes, you had to aim it at the right satellite. <laughs> Did you read those Jeff Foxworthy books? Uh uh-uh. uh You might be a redneck if. Yeah. Oh one, yeah, yeah, one, yeah. One of my favorite was uh, if you've ever had sex in a satellite dish. <laughs> and I was like, I, I know, Kev, I'm not a redneck. Kevin, apparently. <laughs> Kevin Pratt from Rome, Mississippi. I'm looking at you. From Rome? Yeah. So, you know, that's Sunflower County. Yeah. I won Rome last time. <laughs> Dude. In the election, I did. I won Rome. I got like 90% of the vote in Rome. Well, you're, you're, you're the man of the people in Rome, evidently. Evidently so. Um, Rome, Rome, when in Rome. Yeah. Where, where'd you get your ass beat the most? Like, where'd you, like, where, where did so, people not like Stafford? So, last time I ran, I, I didn't get beat anywhere. Yeah. I won it. It's, it's like 12 or 14 precincts. I yeah. won them all. But... So I ran four elections. One of them I was unopposed, so it didn't matter. So the other two, I got beat in Ruleville and Sunflower so badly. And I remember talking to the mayor of Ruleville, because she's supposed to be my buddy, right? She's supposed to be helping me. Yeah, you're cool, man. You're killing me. Yeah. And I said, you know what I figured out is I could lose every vote in your town and I would still be judged. And by gosh, the next time I got it. <laughs> yeah, just be like, I don't. There That's what I said. I said, I'm not even going to campaign here next time. But the people in rural were good to me. And I was the city judge there at the time. 
yeah. so which is a hired position. So I was hired to be city judge, and I was like, I, you know, I, I felt like I was, maybe I wasn't doing a very good job as city judge. Maybe that was the problem. <laughs> like, oh, we got to get rid of this guy. <laughs> exactly. So that they didn't vote for me, but uh, it's some interesting politics in the Delta, and for sure. uh, and you know we have a lot of fun with it, but. Backing up a little bit, we'll probably splice this in somewhere else. But backing up, I'm with Wright Thompson, senior writer ESPN, Woo. and whatever that means. Uh, it sounds important. <laughs> it sounds really important. I had a funny story about that. When you first started emailing me, I know who the hell Wright Thompson was. And, it's not true. And I still didn't pick up on that ESPN senior writer thing until like after we'd met. And you were talking, I'm like, wait a minute. And I said, I think it says something about that on that email. I went back and looked. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, see, that's, we like to keep it a secret. And yet, well, I see that. <laughs> it's on the bottom of every email he sends. But we're here today to talk about your newest book. Very excited. we got to show this book off. This is It, to, it is on sale today. Uh, it's called Pappy Land, Story of Family, Fine Bourbon, and the Things That Last. It's about Pappy Van Winkle, the bourbon. But the thing we, he and I have been talking about... Uh, half of it is about Julian Van Winkle who makes Pappy Van Winkle so that part's about Kentucky but the other half of it's about me and I grew up in Clarksdale and uh, so a lot of it is set in the Mississippi Delta uh, so I hope that uh, I hope that a lot of people uh, who grew up in the Delta grew up in Mississippi will uh, really see themselves in it yeah. and, and like know about the places I'm talking about when I'm talking about riding the levee you know out to you know Miller Point and Concordia. People are gonna know where that is, right? And so they'll uh, have a direct understanding. Yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm, uh, you know, we're selling a lot of books in the state of Mississippi. What I like, which I like. This, by the way, is uh, this is Lafayette County moonshine. Uh, this is made with the actual uh, Pappy Van Winkle mash bill. So uh, this is Pappy moonshine. So I've been really shining Stafford up. It's pretty funny. So yeah, and the, we're sitting on the balcony of uh, yeah. Square Books, mm -hmm. right here on the Square in Oxford, which is one of the, I mean, where else can you do that? And uh, you know, bottoms up. This thing lit me up. We already did this once. Yeah, we're we're a lot tougher now because we've had some practice. Yeah. But if you're watching the Facebook Live thing we did a minute ago, uh, our manhood is uh, seriously in question because we both were like, you know, my manhood still might be in question. That that's stop. That's for real. That's no <laughs> that joke. That is for real. It needs to sit in a bourbon in a bourbon barrel for, for about, fifteen years. Yeah, fifteen years. God, <laughs> let's not do that anymore. Oh man, yeah. You run out of gas. That's like you could one hundred percent run a lawnmower on this. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That's ethanol. Yeah. No. You, this is like. You, I mean, the government subsidizes that. That's ethanol. No, you you put some tang in this, you'd be ready to go. You'd, well, be, the say, town, we, you'd be the town drunk. Uh, rain make corn. Corn makes whiskey. Well, there you go. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> One of the things I like, you know, if you're if you're a male, and I'm, I'm not, I don't want to say that women wouldn't enjoy the book because I think they would because there's so much family. Yeah. But particularly if you're a guy, you can definitely understand. I can understand what Julian went through because I'm a I'm a third or fourth generation farmer. Yeah. And you know what we talked about the last time we were together. What do you owe yes. the generation before you? But then. On the flip side of that, here you are starting a family, so yeah. you got the memory of your dad. You got uh, newborns. No, I mean, no, you got and, so much going on. And there. so the conversation, me writing a book about a guy who was trying to hold on to the past while I was also fully focused on the future. The book sort of, I hate to say, wrote itself, but it, it those two things were talking to each other, and so it's like I a just dichotomy. Yeah. So instead of like trying to. I just decided, look, I'm going to just write this thing, and I didn't really have a plan. I just sort of did it section by section, and I, 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 I mean, I had this specific thought, like, I'm just going to follow this thing where it takes me and see what happens. Yeah. And uh, and what happened is this, and so it's a, uh, uh, you know, it's a lot about, you know, because my family has been farming the same land for a really long time. You and I have talked about this a lot, but what do you owe, like, I, I love Bruce Springsteen's Broadway show, because he had this thing where he was talking about you know, his dad, he and his dad had, his dad was a real piece of work. And he talked about you could either be like, uh, you can either be an ancestor to your children or a ghost. You know, you can either be something yeah. they want to live up to or, or in someone who sort of pushes them to be their best selves or you and your stuff can be wrapped so tightly around their something ankles. Something they can't get away from. Something they can't get away from. Yeah. And he was like, you want to be an ancestor, not a ghost. I mean, it's, 
you know, I mean, like your father is clearly an ancestor in your life and not a ghost. Yeah. You know, and you think about what a gift that is. And so like when you when you were trying to decide what kind of father you wanted to be, I'm sure you were like, you know, you had a pretty good example of how to do I it. Did. I did. So, I, you know, and I feel like I did too. And I, a lot of people don't, I don't take that for granted. I was very fortunate, but I, I was very aware that I needed to do for these little girls what was done for me. You know, and that, yeah. like, you know, and like, I, so the book is a lot of, you know, my, the first time my wife read it, she was like, oh, you wrote Eat, Pray, Love for Dads. <laughs> yeah. like, God damn it. <laughs> Yeah, I guess I did. Uh, but uh, it's a lot of thinking about those things. Like, what is required of a man in 2020? What is required of a son? What is required of a father? It's a great book. I, I enjoyed the heck out of it. And I, I could talk it. like three hours about it. But in addition to bourbon, we got a book to give away. And uh, we talked before what we were going to base that on. We're giving one away from the Facebook Live we did. But uh, so this one will also go on Instagram. So we'll probably do one on Instagram or something like that. Yeah, cool? yeah, cool. And we want to know the wildest bar. What is, is the that? wildest bar in the state of Mississippi, even if it's closed? Yeah. Because we were talking about like rumors in Cleveland. Oh, man. Where people are getting stabbed in the parking lot, you know, like, or the the landing in Starkville. That place was, is that still there? I don't know. And, you know, I don't know that I ever went inside the bar. We always hung out outside. In the parking Maybe lot? I went inside and shot some pool in there. But the people. But were... I remember I saw a guy get hit with a nine iron outside. Well, that, 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 and the guy that got hit took the nine iron away and almost killed the other guy. Well, yeah, if you True hit, story. If you hit someone with a nine iron, you better knock them out. That's, uh, that's a fact. That was, I, that was the lesson I learned. If you're going to hit somebody with a weapon of, of uh, destruction, yeah. you, you destruct. Well, a hundred percent. Like there was, it used to be a huge party over here in Clarksdale that uh, Wayne Dulaney had called Booty, booty Fest. <laughs> I know Wayne very well. All right, well, the booty we went to Mississippi State. Right, well, the Booty Fest T-shirts were like a hot commodity. Yes, they were. But uh, we would go out there just to watch the rednecks fight each other. I mean, some stuff would go down like way before MMA. They were doing stuff out there, dude. So Rusty West, who watches a lot of my stuff, and we went to high school together head butted a car out there one night and it had to go to bill's body shop afterwards uh he I did or the car, <laughs> the car. Yeah, yeah. no the rusty other. was fine <laughs> rusty that's not good dude no it's not good and rusty lives in clarksville now we get a, we get nothing but the best but he, he's a fine north central academy graduate but actually you know no, Rus booty fest was for real no it was it like people forget how wild that was. I think at the end he had like sponsors, like Coors no, Light was like it Miller was Light. It was huge. Like Ken Murphy was sponsoring him or something. Oh god, and Ken's a good friend of mine too. I Ken and, so Ken and I are close. Oh, Ken's great. Yeah, I always call. You know, you got uh, Ken and Meg. Yeah, which is like Barbie and Ken, literally. Yeah. Like the both of them. Yeah. Like the, what a good looking couple. It's pretty unfair. Yeah, I mean, it really. It's like I feel so cheated. And, and also, you just like you want them to be stupid so badly, so to prove that God is fair, and then they're not. No, they're. they're I know, but like you're like if they were just mean and stupid. Yeah. Then I'd be like, well, God is fair. Oh, Ken, I hope you see that. Somebody's oh, gonna tag Ken in this. Good. But this is this is the fun thing when you get to talking about old bars and all that. So we not only want to know the wildest bar, but the stories like yeah, we're like, talking like, about. Yeah, like if you saw something crazy at Stevens one night, I want to know it. What was the what was the bar you posted the other day on? Oh, that was the Dutch bar in Jackson. I've never heard of that. No, that before. place was like you could get hurt in the Dutch bar. Uh, the Country Music Palace in Baden, Mississippi. If you went in there, I would never. And, and they would always check you for a knife. If you didn't have one, they'd give one to you. <laughs> Just like, you, well, he should have armed himself. The uh, if he's going to decorate his friend with my, his saloon I with saw my friend. That's another good, good bar story. I saw Percy Sledge in there one night. And my cousin Troy Haney was standing at the door, and this black guy walks in the door with a velvet tuxedo on. And my cousin looks at him and says, This is a country music bar, and you're a black guy coming here with a velvet tuxedo. It was Percy Sledge. Well, Percy can do whatever he <laughs> yeah. wants. So he gets up on the stage and he says, I'd really like to thank the big man by the door for the advice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Percy Sledge. Yeah. The uh I think he lived in Baton Rouge too. He was all around. Yeah, he was all over. He was probably living in Baton Rouge then. The uh uh what are some other ones? There was, uh, uh, I mean, the do drop in in Shelby. Oh my goodness! Uh, the uh, how tough must that have been? Really back, really in the in day. The day. Yeah. yeah, no, like it was everything people said. Poke monkeys was. Yeah. No, like the do drop was for real. Uh, it's still open. Do you is know, it, really? it, it is open. This is unbelievable. It is open Friday, Saturday, and Monday. I, I, the Monday thing always kind of 
confuses me. I can't figure it out. Is that when the strippers come? I don't know. It's roaring on Monday. Uh, I I don't actually, I'm not kidding. I think the strippers go there on Monday. Okay. Well, you know, like, so if you're coming in, if you're coming like from Oxford to Clarksdale, so you're going down Highway 6, if you take a right there, sort of past, like when you get past the Laney place, you can go sort of the back way to Lyon, and there's a church there now on that road. There's a school right there when you turn, yeah. and then there's a church right over there that when I was in high school, it was a juke joint, and I don't even think it had a name. Now that is a conversion, like, <laughs> you didn't just convert to people. No, 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 you had to, like, <laughs> to clean the karma of the building it was the only possible way. But, like, it finally got shut down. There are got... so many, like, if we were comedians, how many jokes are in that right Dude, there? you can't even believe it. Like, uh, what are some other great ones? We used to go to Outlaws in Cleveland. Oh, my god! Because it would be yeah. open so late. You know, I saw that sign there the other day, uh, and, I like, I almost want to find out who owns it and buy the Outlaws sign. I know, I know who owns it. Actually. I want the sign. <laughs> well, they're probably going to see it. Hey, uh, I, look, I'll pay a fair price, and I'll have someone come get it, And but I think I need the Outlaws Cara, sign. Kara that owns Catfish Cabin there, I believe, owns that now. Uh, we used to love to go over there. Uh, I'm not saying your staff didn't ID us, but your staff did not ID us. Because we were 15 <laughs> rolling over from Clarksdale because you could get some food. That's like the first time I went to Country Music Pals. I was 15. I weighed 100 and maybe 25 pounds soaking wet. Yeah, yeah. And we walk in. I walk in. Another Clarksdale guy, Alan Powell. Oh, there you go. <laughs> and he's much older than, than me and you. And we walk in, and they look at me, and they go, how old is that guy? He says, 26. I said, okay, stand my hand. And I look 12. Oh, my God. 12. There was, oh, there's so there's so many good These ones. These kids today, you know, we, we rail on kids today. They have no shot at anything like that happening. No, like, it, it, we could get whiskey because the liquor stores. So on, uh, on 4th Street in Clarksdale, Towns Liquor Store, if you could see over the counter, that old man would sell you whiskey. And, uh... But like double quick carded hard, so it was yeah. much easier to get a fifth of old charter than it was. So we could go to the. This is a true story. Right. The what you call it club in Drew, and you could pull up and honk the horn, and they would come out and sell beer to miners. Long gone. Oh yeah, you can't. Jesse get, White, I think Jesse White on it. Somebody from Drew will straighten me out on that. That's great. I mean, you can't do stuff like that anymore. But no. there, there, there's some really good ones. Like, uh, what else? What do we do? Uh, it is easier today for a miner to buy weed than it is alcohol, I think. Oh, I mean, because oh, but I mean, Clarksdale when like Clarksdale, if you're the class of '96, it was still like a place that was barely had laws. I have a great Archie Manning story that some people may like and some people may not because I don't know if it's true. Go. But I'm gonna tell it anyway. All right. So my cousin Steve Sheridan and Archie graduated high school together. Time out, Archie. I don't know what he's about to say, and I do not endorse it. Neither does ESPN. I don't uh, even really know this guy. I don't think Archie's going to want Arch seeing this. I'll put it that way. Okay, put it that way. It's not that bad. Right. It's not that bad. It's, he's just got such a squeaky clean image, you know yeah. what I mean? And we love that. He has a he has a hundred percent Sunday school attendance at both the Methodist and the Baptist church when he was a kid. That's true. Like he would leave one church, I go to the other one, go to Sunday school in both places. All right, let's hear the story. So, is this the Whatchamacallit Club? Please tell me. Oh, no. Whatchamacallit Club wasn't there at that oh, point. Oh, okay. Got it. So, when, you got to think about it. When they were in high school, selling alcohol was still illegal in Mississippi. Yeah. You know, so we... It's 1933 when it became federally legal again, but it wasn't until like 66. 67, I think. 66, 67. So, my cousin Steve says they would... The, the great thing about that for them was no matter who they sold it to, whether it was a minor or not, it was illegal. So... They could go walk in anywhere and buy alcohol because it was illegal for anybody to buy it. Yeah. Then they legalized it and he said, we couldn't buy alcohol anyway. Oh, that's the bummer. <laughs> Unless they sent Archie in and Archie could buy it. Oh, that's perfect. <laughs> well, that was like when Archie uh, when Archie was negotiating his first contract with the Saints, uh, the family lawyer uh, looked at the contract and was like, this is a pay cut compared to what he was getting paid at Ole Miss. Oh, that's funny. They were like, this is, no, this is, no, we're going to, this is not going to get it done. He can't take a pay cut to go to the New Orleans Saints. <laughs> Oh goodness, Archie Manning is is uh, he's good people, man. He is good. I people. saw him in Olivia not that long ago. So if you go up to this stoplight and yeah. you take a right, okay, their place is two three blocks that way. And so and his sister lives next door, and she taught me in high school. She was our uh, accounting teacher. And I, if it wasn't for Miss Shelton, Pam Pam's his sister. Of course, if it wasn't for Miss Shelton, I would not have graduated high school because I I almost didn't pass typing. 
she taught typing and I I mean when you got these callous farmer hands it's not like I can do a lot of stuff we can break in Archie Manning's house with this yeah, like we were talking about yeah, but, but I, I can't type to I've save seen my him life. try to work a phone it's not great <laughs> Did I drop it one time? Weren't we no, doing something? No, you're just fumbling it. it. Like you know, come on, man. But uh, but yeah, it's it's uh, she she kept me from not passing high school. I had decent grades. I have good grades, but I had decent grades. But that one, you had to type so many words a minute to get out of typing, and you had to get out of typing to graduate high school. And I just couldn't do it. Well, she got it made that. me want to drink. Well, some uh, we we'll go to watch McCullough Club. <laughs> right. The uh, God, there's some there's so many good ones, man. The uh, so, all right, well, if you're coming up Highway 60... We need to do a podcast, because we could do this for, for three, three hours. Cause, all right, so when you were coming up Cleveland, and you into Cleveland from Clarksdale on Highway 61, and so you take that right, like, so you pull up, and then there's the sh- strip mall, center shopping mall that where Rumors was. And if you yeah. take a right, like, you're going to go down to Delta State. There's, there used to be some other bar up on the right that was sort of a little dive that famously didn't ID. And I can't remember the name you're of that place. You're not about the Oasis. It might have been the Oasis. Played a lot of widespread panic. Pro- I, well, I don't know. Anyway, I, that bar, like... <clears throat> the Oasis was... Uh... In, in Sarah's Kitchen in Clarksdale, where they did an ID. Uh, uh, Red's in Clarksdale, where they did an ID. Red's is still there. Red's it? is still there. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's good stuff. Yeah, there there are so many. And I guess every little town used to have a bar. And you don't really have that anymore. And probably drinking and driving laws have something to do with that, and that's not a bad thing. No, it's a good but thing. But I do miss the... Oh, just like... Yeah. Uh, no, this, like, We talked about that last time. I mean, like, you can go de- down a deep nostalgia whole thing about all those Delta places that aren't there. It makes the places that are there, whether we're talking about Raymond's... We're talking about not pain and home? Yeah, yeah. A hundred percent. Uh, I love to go to Raymond's. I love to go to Abe's. I love to go to the ranch. I love to go to the Rest Haven. I can't believe I've never been there. I can't believe you haven't either. I mean, to Raymond's. Raymond's is. It's on my list now. It, it, it's as good a restaurant as there is in the state of Mississippi. It is in so, the. It's in the conversation for me for like last meal on earth. Yeah, you, well, I, I mean, like you mentioned it in both of your books. No, I love it a lot. I can tell. No, it's a really. I'm like, I'm like I really need to go there. And no, eat like, like I love Raymond so much. What do you get there? All right, well, that's a really good question because most people get fried shrimp, and their fried shrimp is famous and it's outstanding. Uh, sometimes I'll just everyone's always getting the shrimp, so I can just sort of steal one. So you don't have to act order. No, what I like is they have veal cutlets with. They, it's cavatuna. It must be some sort of like holdover word for a pasta from Naples that no one uses anymore because all these southern Italian folks yeah. that came up. That you know, Actually, they all rode, they were shipping lemons into the United States to the port of New Orleans from Sicily. And so every Italian in Louisiana, Mississippi, and Arkansas basically arrived in the port of New Orleans on these lemon boats. And I don't know. There's a book there. It's crazy. What's interesting is they did it because they checked papers at Ellis Island, but they don't give a shit in New Orleans. <laughs> And so, like, every, if you're Italian and you live in the Mississippi Delta or in New Orleans, man, your people were 100% jumping the border wall. Like, like, 100%. That's great. And so, but, like, they, they migrated up through the whole area. And so, uh, so it's, it's veal cutlets and it's this cut cavatuna with meat sauce and it's this great salad with homemade salad dressing. And I just love it. You can brown bag your own liquor. It's the kind of place where you look up and it'll be, you know, like, you know Fred Saponi from Mississippi State? Big, yeah. Big perm. Like, you look over and uh, Fred's dad is real prominent in the Catholic Church in town. And you look over and he's a big planter, farmer. And you look over and be Fred's dad, mom and dad and the local Catholic priest over there. It's like, you every time you go in there, you're like, oh, Charlie Connerly's widow is just over there playing bridge or something. You know, and, and it's just me, the, it's Lillo's the, is like that, From even though it's further away from my house. Yeah, but, but it's the same sort of thing. Yeah, it's exactly and, the same as it was the day they opened And, it. like, Catherine's at Moon Lake is a lot like that. I don't know if yeah. you've ever been out never, there. Never, never been there. No, that, that's as good a steak as there is in the state of Mississippi. I mean, it has Italian stuff too. They make he makes really good homemade pesto. It's John Mohead who yeah. has it. And yeah, so, yeah. And so uh, they make really good homemade pesto. But those steaks, I mean, I'm gonna have to go check that no, out. No, that one's a really good one. I was in uh, Crowd Ads the other night, and and the chef owner Crow and I were talking. Oh, yeah. He's the one that called you the goat. He said this is the goat oh, at ESPN. Well, Crowd Ads <laughs> is a goat. I mean, you talk about places you used to go in high school where they did not ID. You get one so, of those little back rooms. Yes. And like way before it burned. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, like 
way, way. And like we all sitting there. I even then I remember thinking, crawdads. Like crawdads. It was are, like two rooms at the time. Yeah, probably. but there, but and there, but there were like you could get in there and, you, and yeah, you almost could just shut the door. Yeah, and then and, I, I missed the. I, I, the new place is beautiful don't misunderstand but I miss that old place because it was a dump which was a one room shack that they sold crawfish on the porch yeah and then they said well let's throw on a room and cook steaks and then they threw on another room and another room yeah. and so if you never saw the old one you really missed out well and also I mean crawfish are good but like those steaks were always so good I oh, could yeah. never really understand but why am I going to do all this work to have a tiny amount of food that just tastes like spicy cayenne pepper anyway when i could have this unbelievable steak well, like, even you, have, it, even you know it, we have both that's what we do oh that's really you smart. can get both yeah i never even thought about that i'm so stupid see this is why this he was thought about it. that yeah we we get the crawfish as an appetizer and then eat the steak oh there. that's really smart yeah so um let's show the book one more time please because so much fun this book well Fun may not be the right word. Parts it's, of it are fun. Parts of it are fun. Parts of it are kind of gut wrenching. Well, I mean, it, it needs in to a be, good way. I mean, I hope I make you laugh and make you cry. You know? No, that's that's the that's the beauty of, of what you do is you run the gamut of emotions on this thing. Well, I mean, I'm certainly bouncing all over the place. So uh, I never realize that. that <laughs> I think that's why you and I get along. We're we're both kind of all over the place. And well, this I mean, I, you know, I it, it, I hope that I hope that people see themselves in it. You know, that's what I'm. I, I, you know, if I have a, if I, have I did, a wish. I did for sure, and that you and I talked about that. Did I see myself in it? Because you and I are similar. Are there just ultimate truths that, with people? I don't know the answer to that. I mean, I, I hope that it's B, but it could be A. Yeah. I guess we'll, we I, have similar. Yeah. You know, being from the Delta and, and, and sort of have the same. We understand the if world. If you're a guy from Mississippi, you're gonna like the book. I, I don't see how you couldn't. Yeah, and if you're if you are related to or married to a guy from Mississippi, and you don't get this for them for Christmas right our, well that's where I was going our with thing is over <laughs> my kids gotta have new shoes I don't know what you're doing but like get your checkbook out yeah these are these are gonna be great Christmas gifts and like I'm fixing to buy like 10 of them to give away cause they're I got the privilege of getting to read it and before today and it, I was just like you were one of the first I see you, you got it early you I were did one, you were one, like a couple months ago you were like one of the first people like I think there was still some editing even left you told me yeah no the, you got like my draft of it no like, it was it was great well it'd be interesting to read this one now yeah it's not that much different but I mean it's it's no it's different I mean you got yeah. the my word doc I think almost you know what I mean <laughs> yeah. Uh, but look, no, this was, I appreciate you driving all the way over here. Uh, well, it's, it's like I said last time, you know, I love doing, I would do this for free and I do do it for free. But one day, maybe he'll have an well, airplane. Well, even that, what, and my point is, if I'm always doing it for free, I'm cool with that because it's a lot of fun. But one of the most fun things is I get to run into people I wouldn't normally, right. under, which we met under other circumstances, but you know, it's kind of cool to have people like you on and, and talk about all this fun stuff. I like and, it. Uh, I, I, these are my. This was this was the conversation I was looking forward to today. So this was I appreciate it so much. Where uh, before we close, where else have you been on? Uh, what you got some interviews coming up? I know. So I did. Uh, uh, I mean, I've done a ton. Today I'm on. Uh, I was on Dan Patrick. So that's coming out. No, that's a, that was live. That was live. But you uh, can still go watch it. You can still go watch it. Uh, I'm on. I'm going to be on NPR Marketplace. You got a few with Dan on this. Yeah. Book, had you? Yeah. Dan is an old friend and a great guy. Yeah. Uh, I saw the other one you did from the beach. Like was, you were. <laughs> I was. I was mashed out in that chair, and they were like, "Can you come on?" And I'm like, "As long as you understand that I'm at the beach." And I'm not going to try to pretend like I'm not at the beach. You did? I, no, I was drinking beer at 9 a.m. on the Dan Patrick show. And I was like, I told you. I mean, I, like. Uncle I, Dan. I'm like, what do you, you know, I, I told your producer very clearly I'm going to be at the beach drinking beer. If you want me to hold my phone up while I'm doing that. Which is what you did. Which is what I did. I will do that. But just understand that I'm not tapping the brakes on this shit show one bit. <laughs> Uh, and you didn't. I did not. Which is the great thing. That's the, and that's the thing I do love about social media is that we don't have to edit any of this out if we don't want to. No, don't, we could literally not cut it, just... Put it on, put it out yeah, there. just put it out there like it is, which is nine out of ten times what I do. That's the way to do it. And, and it's also much easier. Oh, yeah. Like, I'm not, I don't know what the hell I'm doing editing, so well, yeah, if a lot can, of it is because of If you figure that. that out, let me know. I, well, I'll tell this quick story. Like I said, we need a podcast. We could go forever. 
I use Windows Movie Maker <laughs> from like 1996. Awesome. And you can only add one uh, audio to it and not multiple. So I literally, because I'm so stupid at this, I literally add this audio to it. And then I'll say that and I want to add music, I have to reopen it back up and start a new movie. So it's like, but the other side of that is I can edit it in like five minutes. That's the way to go. Yeah, so yeah. Besides, you got to go home. Are you still cutting beans? Uh, I'm done. I'm done with beans, done with rice. We're breaking land now. Okay. So we're trying to get rid of all those ruts. And uh, there's still a few guys that are not through. And I really feel for you guys. Yeah, no. We're You're going to need the bourbon. You're going to 100% need the bourbon. Yeah. Uh, you also, we, uh, Bill O'Neill, who is the manager at our, at our place, I got to get, I, I, honestly, I've been thinking about trying to get him uh uh, a bottle because I just found. No, you ought to do that for real. No, because we are uh, the last we were cutting. Th this is unbelievable. Uh, he he was cutting more than a hundred bushels an acre. So we don't have that kind of dirt and drip. No, but like it was and like we at one point we were averaging in the seventies. Yeah, no, it's been a good bean crop. It's been a it really like I could. They, it, it, and, no, it was hard to get out, but we had a really good bean crop. And uh, my cousin Thomas was doing four and a half bales of cotton an acre. Yeah, you told me that, and I was like, I, I wish my it. dad was alive to see four and a half bale of cotton. It's the prettiest thing you've ever seen. I could he, and my cousin is just he's not being modest about it. He's <laughs> yeah. but he's trying to be. He's coming up with excuses to like you know send pictures where it's like a selfie. Like, dude, it, we understand that it's about the cotton crop. We get it. Yeah. Uh, not about the shirt you have. Yeah, on no, today. I don't care about your, you know, whatever mallard duck thing you got. Like, <laughs> right. yeah. So anyway, well, I appreciate you coming over here, man. This All right, really man. Nice. It was, it, well, it's an easy drive, and, and Oxford ain't so bad. I gotta admit. And I give this uh, a one point one uh, octane. Depends on what you want to do. No, it is a. Uh, if you want to get in a fight, you want to run a, your this lawnmower. Is a nine point nine. <laughs> uh, if you're going to propose to your wife, this is a one. Yeah, that probably is not going to go very far. No, but... I wonder what our breath smells like after drinking that. Awesome. Don't like get pulled gasoline? Up. Yeah, 100%. Like they'd be like, why are you even drinking gasoline? Just, they wouldn't think just, at I'm, all. I'm, that. I'm from Drew. Yeah. I don't know any better. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think that's going to be a wrap, dude. All right. Thank you Thank so you much. Thank you so much, brother. Appreciate you. Always. Awesome. That was great. Yeah, it was. Mm -hmm.